welcome back to another episode of Getting Lippy with me, Emma Cooney Bear, the home of everything entertainment and showbiz news, brought to you by Slingo. Joining me on the show today, we've got Callie J, season one Love Island. First of all, I cannot believe season one. Yeah. Wow, so long ago. And in the journalist corner, Amanda Devlin, giving us all of the gossip and everything that's in the news at the moment, which I can't wait to yeah. discuss. Not what's really? going on, is that? Really? Yeah. <laughs> lies, lies. Join the fun on Slingo. Enjoy a £50 welcome bonus. Play over 3,000 vibrant Slingo games. Age 25 and over, be gamble aware. For more information, visit begambleware.org. So, Kelly, like I said, season one, Love Island, yeah. 2015. Seems long so long ago, ago, right? Very, very long ago. But I feel like I've only just watched you on TV, though, in the sense of Love Island. Yeah, to be fair, people still recognise me, which I think is really bizarre. Um, but yeah, it was such a long time ago. It's changed massively, but I'm still a guilty pleasure. I still love to watch it. I yeah, know. So. I was going to say, it has changed a lot. Let's yeah. face it. I mean, yeah. in the first couple of seasons, there was there was drinking, there was smoking, yeah. there was proposals. What was it? John Clark. It was Clark. so good. It, <laughs> wasn't so it? it was so it's good. Iconic. The one and two are my absolute favourite. Yeah. yeah. And they always will be. They're just so, so Yeah. Good. I think because it was really real, like a lot of people I just say, like, it. it's kind of followed a little bit of a pattern now. Yeah. And like, obviously the first and second was pretty much like guinea pig series. We do, They kind of just was figuring it out what's happening. We had live shows as well, which they, they don't do anymore. Um, we didn't have a Casa Amor. It was kind oh. of, I think on ours, um, Callum Best came and t- took the boys out in Magaluf. That oh was my like a Casa goodness, Amor moment. I remember <laughs> that because Callum yeah. Best was yeah. the celebrity Love Island yeah. way back when. And I that watched that one as well. As, yeah, I did. Oh, that yeah. was it. Everything, everything was a shock. Was. Then mm. everything was like, what's going on? Like people's exes came in and it was just like, it was just bizarre. No one knew what was mm. going on, but it was everything that was happening was like real immersion there. Nobody knew how to game plan or like get in couples and figure it out. And it, you just yeah. went in for the fun, right? Yeah, it was, I didn't really, didn't even know what it was. I think I just remember being, you, they took you on these little like buggies um, up to like the villa. And I remember on the, you know, they had the little walkie talkie things. Mm. One of the people saying, oh, we've, we've just beat like the viewings for like ITV hub Coronation Street, which was like, back then was like the most watched yeah. thing was Coronation Street. So I remember thinking, oh, that's really good. Like just in my ear, <laughs> like saw this little buggy going, Coronation Street, that's really good. Then I thought, oh my God, what have I got myself into? Like what is, like reality TV wasn't a big thing back mm. then. It wasn't massive. I think it was like, the only way is Essex was kind of the only yeah, thing, made, was it? Made in Chelsea yeah, as well. It was pretty, it, it was. Was quite new. Big Brother yeah. era as well? Can't forget that would take me out either. Yeah, just yeah <laughs> but it was all pretty, you know, natural and new and yeah. it was just not this big social world what we live in now. And I it's think so it genuine. is. genuine, that's yeah. why it's genuine. Yeah. Do you kind yeah. of wish that you had done it, are you glad that you did it then and not now? I think so. Um, oh, I've got a daughter. Out of mm. it. So yeah, she was the the first Love Island baby, and she's yeah. six now. I can't so believe that's that. crazy. But yeah, I think I think because it was just so natural back then. I don't know. I'm quite a nervous person, so I think knowing how big the show is now, mm. I think if I was to go at it now, I'd be a bit more. I was going to say that. how you could be perceived, even though you know you're a good person. There's a lot of you know camera editing. You see the things all over yeah. the the little feeds and things that are like, oh, someone's hands like cropped into a video, or someone's there in the kitchen, <laughs> but now they're there at the fire. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And I think, yeah. God, like it just wasn't like that when we did it. So it it does sound a bit mad, like when you walked into like the I like Love Island mm. now compared mm. to well, back then compared to now, like, do you think you would be completely different? Do you think you would have, your mind would have been a little bit different? Because I'm a different person as well. I'm 31 now. I was, what was I, like 23 or something? Not very good at maths, but I was younger then and I was pretty, you know, timid and I was quiet. Like, I think if you actually watch season one, most of the time I'm walking around in the background with a towel on my head and scoffing a flapjack or something. Like, (laughs) I'm not doing anything like wild and we didn't have to, get dressed up to sit in the garden. Like I would sometimes Put make up on. Yeah, that yeah, was I'd it. I'd be sat there in my dressing gown like, and like, <laughs> like Caroline would walk in and I'd be like, oh, do you know what I mean? It was really, 
it was just a real but natural thing. I do think that's why I enjoyed seasons one to three, I think it was. Mm. Like, because Olivia Bowen, she was the mm. one after Katie, right? Because was Katie... I think Olivia was in... <coughs> they were, the two. were they both two. in the two. Yeah. yeah. But I think what I loved was... Like the girls lost their shit a bit, you know? Yeah. And I was like, that's normal. Like girls they, are gonna I lose think their they shit. Knew that time, like, okay, this is how we're gonna get the girls riled up. This is how yeah. we know from like little touches in it our was. series what to do. I think it that everybody was ready for it that time, I think. Did you think, um, when you came out of the villa, mm. do you think that you would have uh, expected like this celebrity status off the back of it or no, anything like that? I had no no clue. What did again, it feel like to come out and then well, I remember, you had I this remember coming out and shoot? Yeah, getting our phones. That was the yeah. first thing. And I remember switching my phone on and Instagram was quite a new thing then. Mm. Um, I know now they come out to like loads of followers sometimes. Um, and they, I had like 70,000. But in like 2015, that was like yeah. Yeah. huge. I remember thinking, oh my God, why is 70,000 people following me? It's not it's not normal. I didn't really think much of it mm. till I actually thought, oh, I'm going to go out shopping today in Oxford Street. I'm just going to do some shopping took me hours just to get to Oxford Street because the amount of people just stopping me. And going, oh, oh my, my God, oh my God, goodness. come on a picture. And I just thought, what on earth is going on? It was a bit crazy. Yeah, so take me out. It was the first time that we had the after show, which was had Zoe Hardman and Mark Wright. Mm. And it kind of like boomed. Like when I came, I think if I was 21 when I did that, so what, tw yeah, 20, 2011, 2012. Mm -hmm. And we didn't have Instagram at all. It was yeah. Twitter. And I remember there was campaigns with brands doing brand like on Twitter sort of thing because there was no really? Instagram. Did you come out and you, like these brands were just like throwing no, themselves really. like no, not really. Um, it was more I think PAs was a big thing back then like the personal what? appearances. Oh in yeah, clubs. PAs. Like, yeah, people yeah, used to yeah, go yeah. to clubs all the time. Yeah. yeah, now it's more like brand focused. But I think again that's because of the whole social media and you know um, pictures and things like that. But not really. It was more for the boys, I think, did clubs and peers and yeah. stuff like that. But it wasn't mm. like massive, you know, deals back then. You just slowly kind of, you know, went out into the world about what you wanted to do. If you wanted to go in that direction or mm. this direction. Everyone kind of was just winging it and just got oh, with, really? you know, management saying, oh, we'll look after you do this. And you just slowly built yourself up to where you are rather yeah. than it being like an instant thing. You got it all at once. It was more... If you want to pursue this level, this is where you go to this. This is the fashion industry. This is the, you know, that kind of thing, really. And how did you divert your route when you came out of it? Again, I think I totally winged it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I had, like, a few people that I'd used to meet at events. So at the time, I was living in London. Um, and the management would just say, oh, there's this event if you want to go to. And I kind of was just, like, living a bit of a, mm. bit of a life. I thought, oh, okay, I'll go to this event, go to that event. And you just kind of meet people that are in the industry that kind of take you under the wing a little bit and you know you, they can see that you knew out of the show you've been mm. like intimidated so there was i met some like really lovely people that was just oh come to this come to that and you just you kind of just figure your way out really, really? yeah it wasn't as structured as i think as it is now they kind of know what's going on what they need to do straight away yeah, they're getting deals away. while they're in the villa at yeah, the moment yeah, yeah, like yeah. molly marsh molly marsh that's mm -hmm. her surname isn't it so she was she was an influencer before because i think she mm. was with an agency that um, where my friend used to be okay. and like the agents literally was doing deals while she was in the villa she obviously got really? kicked out halfway through and I think I was on Twitter the other day and she did like a femme fresh advert like <laughs> and then she goes oh. back into the villa again it's like there we go just <laughs> nice little 10k <laughs> job wicked back in the villa I, mean, I yeah, do like but, her but really. she's just a little bit of a kind of a Molly May Hague copycat because she yeah. even had the toy in there she looks very similar to her she has that kind of yeah, pretty yeah. little thing yeah. With yeah. style um and it's going in there and kind of with that game plan just don't think the the fans like that they yeah. want you to be genuine they want you to yeah. go in there and to be looking for love having a meltdown mm. because a boy's been horrible to you that's what we want to see yeah. yeah i love jess um so your instagram actually boasts five hundred thousand followers correct do you yeah, do any of the other platforms as well youtube um I don't really do YouTube. Um, I do my TikTok. I just yeah. jumped on that randomly. So have I. And I, all of a sudden it's fun. Yeah, it's fun. And it's I feel fun. like it's a good escape. I've just got on the threads, the new oh, yeah. threads thing. Um, but yeah, other than that, not not massively. Yes. Yeah. So tell me about your your day to day mm. as a as an influencer, social media content creator, because it's not. All the time, it's it's not as glamorous as what people think by looking yeah. at the images. There's there's yeah. hard work to it. Yeah, massively. And I think 
you still, you know, have other aspects of your life. So I'm still going down the path of a, a music career over the past couple of years and that's had like stop starts for loads of complication reasons. Um, so I've got that path that I'm still trying to go down, but then there is my influencer side, what, um, you know, I work with brands, do the content mm. creation. It's like scheduling your days more to, okay, this I've got to get done by this date because this has got a deadline for this. This has got to be posted up while doing all your normal stuff of, mm. you know, being a mum still. So I'm doing the cooking, the cleaning, getting her to school, picking her up and she wants to go to dance class. And then, you know, having a little family household and just getting about everything. You still have to have a very organised day just yeah. as if I had like, a normal nine to five job like some of my friends used to be like oh it's all right for you you just post the picture looking nice it's not it's hard work it's really not like sometimes I get so stressed and overwhelmed Mm. with things and I think people just think oh god shut up you have like a really good life and I just think oh no like I still still have to work you know my ass off basically I'm still I'm still at season one yeah as good as it is I can say I'm an original it was fun it was very real but Mm. I'm still season one and we're like what nearly 10 are we 10 seasons now down and i'm like i still have to you know work hard and stuff to keep up a you know brand you know relationships and you know image and things like that to be able to still work in that industry while Mm. i'm you know figuring out also things that i want to do and things like that especially now because there's two series of love under year I mean, yeah, the, the, I, hate I that. don't think yeah. anyone cares about the winter one, though. To be quite yeah. honest, because I think I'm so not wow. Well, <laughs> I don't mean anything like that, but I'm so much more invested in the summer one. The winter yeah. one, I'm a bit like, oh, this is quite nice to watch, but like, I'm not really yeah. that bothered. This one, I was so tired this morning. I was like, get up early just so I can watch last night's because really? I watch it in the morning. I'm not that dedicated where I watch it at night time. Like, I don't want to sit oh, for I the am. adverts. Oh, like are you? Little, yeah. yeah, but I try and watch it on like the ITVX and like oh, and oh, stuff, oh yeah. But but I'm I'm sad that they kind of did that. To be fair, I feel like it took a little bit of the specialness yep. away from it doing two a year. I don't think mm. it needed it. I think it's definitely. You know, I do think the summer one's definitely better. Yeah. 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 Um. Just going back to your your day to day work. Tell me more about your music career. What, what? Um. So I'm I'm literally going in the studio um next week. Uh. It's been like the most up and down thing. I've not even really spoke about a lot of it on social media. I released um a song a couple of years ago. Um, got really good reception, really good streams, really good monthly listeners. Um, but if anyone works in the music industry, they'll know what I'm talking about when they say there's a lot of gatekeepers and a lot of people oh, that yeah. you over, basically. Yeah. So I've recorded probably near 15 songs that nobody's ever heard because people, you know, they see where potential things could come and situations could come and what originally starts off as a, you know, friendship and genuine kind of thing then becomes, yeah. you know, you trust them and you work with them and then it come, becomes a, okay, I'm going to hold your music because I, now I want X, Y, and Z of your career. It sounds like um, it's, Kesha. Yeah. It was Kesha, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. The TikTok, TikTok and Timber. She did those songs, didn't she? Mm-hmm. And she went through this whole legal battle to get rid of her manager because the manager was like yeah. holding on to the songs. And she and I think she was, she was so popular when I was at uni, like um, 2007, 2006, 2008. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden she just went dead, like dead off the face of earth. And you're yeah. just like, what's going on here? And I, and think that's, I think that's the hard thing because like like for me, I haven't really addressed it properly and I feel like I, I, I will because people still message me, oh, are you doing your music? Because once you're kind of in that public eye and mm. then you're saying, this is the area that I love. I've, I've yeah. grown up being a performer. This is the area I want to go down. Mm. And then you tease a little bit of it and then all of a sudden it stops and everybody thinks well, was she not serious yeah. about that? Was it just, did she just think I'll do this for the crack? And I'm like, no, this is my passion, but it's been, you know, I went to New York, you know, last February and recorded some music. And, and again, I had literally the same thing happen. Yeah, so it's like happened to me twice. So I've got to the point where I wouldn't record. I wouldn't go and just catch a vibe with a producer anymore in a studio. It was like- So what, where is this music at the moment then? Like, are they allowed to release it or like- no. So what? Just, this is mad. Yeah, it's I like mean, a waste. What's the, what's the point? There's ways of repurposing, you know, the music because I wrote the songs myself, but it was on somebody else's um, beat, basically. So uh. I could do that. Um, but yeah, it's it's a, just a real difficult industry, and it's it's got to the point a couple of times where I just thought I'm just going to give up. But I don't want to do that. It's still where I want to where I want to go. But so it will all fall into place, like yeah. something will. But I, I know, and I it's think, just draining. and the music industry, it is so difficult, yeah. and it's so difficult to, to like 
crack it as well. Yeah. Like uh, my one of my mates, um, he's a DJ mm. and he's great. He's just such a great DJ. But mm. even he says that sometimes if he produces a song and he wants to take a lyrics off of uh, like another tune, yeah. you know, and then after the producing and the editing mm. and all of that, and then you get somebody to come in and fine tune everything. It's like 50 grand, like just to yeah, do it. It's, it's, it's an expensive. Yeah. It's crazy. It's so expensive. Yeah. So this but. is why I've, I've got to the point now where I was like, I'm not going to, I'm not going to do that anymore because it's my time that I was mm. initially wasting mm. probably like two years of when I should have been continuing music that it just looks like it, music drops off the face of the air for yeah. me. And in the background, that's not the case. Yeah. Um, but next week I do start studio again and I've got like a, you know, a good backing and a good support. Oh, so this is good. We're excited for this. Yeah. yeah. I've got contractual signings and stuff now, which is, which is good. Mm. Um, but I feel like that's what I needed to have that confidence there that, somebody wasn't going to decide to change the ball game mm. and yeah. try and hold my music again because now it's contracted fees have to be released this but is this yeah. is great starting with some covers just yes. to pull back in excited the guys about that, that. Do music but yeah I'm now i was going to say to you like being in the social eye and mm. being a celebrity status do you feel as though that uh you sometimes you might have really bad experiences such as that or mm -hmm. such as trolling or even to the point of people um you, you do a branded campaign or something like that and mm. people don't pay you. Or have you had some really bad experiences? Um, I've had like the odd one where a brand w w wouldn't. Um, but I think that's why it's always good to have like a management really to kind of you know, follow that through for you. Um, but not massively, not massively had many problems. Same with trolling really. I didn't really get yeah. much trolling uh, i don't think i really did anything too dramatic on my series that <laughs> troll me about. um i think yeah. that's it because your series was so authentic yeah. everyone's just like oh we love you we know just, yeah, exactly. and i think it yeah. was it i mean i mean people like to have an opinion on you know my relationships and things like that and i have a type and stuff like that but other than that no nah, it's not really but true. i feel as though that tiktok though has got a w so much more hate than instagram yeah so weird yeah. tiktok i might post a, a video like with an interview or something like this and they're like blah, 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 blah. and you would get about 20 comments them yeah, just slagging really, the person off really i'm committed. like chill out you yeah. know oh or if i God. might do something really sarcastic i don't know like oh talking about my dating dilemma <laughs> life as it yeah. always is just crap <laughs> um and then it's like oh you're so stuck up and i'm like hang on a second i'm the one that gets messed over by the lads don't yeah. don't attack me now yeah. yeah but tiktok is just like so much more horrible yeah, yeah i know i think uh, there was that thing that went around about like being more like petitions and ids and things mm. like that wasn't it i don't know if that was just for instagram but yeah. i was massively like back in that i was literally yeah. like everybody should have to have you know id every time they set up a social media account now because of all like the trolling that does happen and it yeah. leads to people you know children committing suicide and all sorts now and i just think we social media should do better than that like True. it should need to catch up with yeah. how far social media is exactly isn't yeah it? i think i think definitely like as soon as i hit my 30s mm. i was a bit like <laughs> whatever mate like i don't care it doesn't doesn't nothing can yeah nothing, nothing can hurt yet. me now no but i think when I was mid twenties, that would really affect it. Cause mm -hmm. I think from the age of 25 to like 28, you kind of go through a little, oh, I, I'm older now. Like, you know, I, I should be more confident in myself, but you don't really have yeah. it. Like I, I was really so confident true. when I was younger. And then I went for a real big blip, like after like early twenties, then you're trying to build yourself back up. Mm. But you just don't have that confidence. Cause I think that's a time of your life where you do have loads of rejection from work, from yeah. men, from friendships, you name it. And you're not actually confident. And then all you need is just, all you have is just this person is like, yeah, shouting it, at you or whatever. And it happens and it's, and it's gonna happen. And it's probably gonna happen to me when I first start releasing my songs. They'll be like, oh, are you singing again now? Do you know what yeah. I mean? Where's this been? Who do you think you are? Da, 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 da. Now you wanna yeah. be a singer? I'll just be like, you have, you have no clue what I've yeah. gone through in the background, yeah. what I've grown up doing because no one's really seen that side. Mm. So you get the, you know, the really lovely, like, diehard fans that'll be like, really support you. And I just love them, like, to death. They're just, I can notice them all the time. And then you'll get the ones that'll just oh, want to yeah. have an opinion for having an opinion. Yeah. So I'm kind of, even though I've not had trolls, I'm prepared that I'm probably going to when mm. the music starts happening. It's horrible yeah. that you have to think like that. Yeah, but you do is, kind of have to go up big yourself. if you put yourself mm -hmm. out there that you have to expect yeah. that you might get these kind of mm -hmm. comments. Yeah, and I think I w I'm always a person that's like, I would rather push myself and be like, I don't want to turn around and be like, oh, what if I'd done mm. it that last time? I'd rather say, oh, well, well, if it doesn't 
go the way I want it to go, then I try. Do you know what I mean? Mm. I'd rather, you know, I don't want to stop doing something I love because of like all the obstacles that have happened because they've always been out of my hands. So I'm like, maybe these are like my tests to just keep going and just keep going and keep going. And then that one time it might just stick. So. It will. Fingers have crossed. confidence it will yes. it will yeah but yeah i think that's it the sign that you love just keep going with it yeah like 100%. and then it's almost like i don't give a fuck about you like yeah. i was when i first started djing i was shit mm. i don't mind i i don't mind saying it i was mm. really bad and i remember i went to this gig and um i was like i'm playing house music because at the time that was the only music i was able to dj because it was <laughs> easy hit the beat yeah you can do it and i was there for one hour and the manager of the club was like okay you can go like yeah, you you can go home now. <laughs> like, and, and that was like the worst experience <laughs> of my oh life. My He's basically like, you can leave. <laughs> you can leave. And I was like, oh. okay, cool. You can still pay me though. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so I left. Uh, and then from that point, I mean, this is like 10 years ago, right? Yeah. So from that point, I just went, okay, I need to be the best that I can be mm -hmm. because I don't want to have any more embarrassing situations like that. And I need to know how to DJ every single genre. So if somebody asked me, oh, can I play this? Can I play this? Yep, got mm -hmm. it. Yep, yeah, got it. Yep, yeah, got it. I can play it. Yeah, so you feel like you're more in control of. Yeah, and that's the best. That's the best place to be in, and it's that's with me with the music. It's been the worst place because it's been totally not in my control. Yeah, like what's happened, and it's been stress because I'd literally this music that I did have the stuff that I'd created in New York was like on the table to be a supporting act for a huge artist oh. and the just guys just wouldn't the give the music the so it was the dis of it. disappointment yeah. that i could have i think that's everybody. worse isn't it yeah. disappointment this is the worse yeah because i wanted to just be like oh my god this this would is be it huge like this yeah. would be massive if i could support this bears on tour but yeah it fell flat because he wouldn't send it i like to believe that it was not meant though that exactly yeah. i was about to say it wasn't meant to be mm -hmm. like i'm a really big believer around, in that like, maybe you've got exactly loads more material now to write yeah, about exactly. that confidence yeah. as and well i'm not saying that you didn't have one day and look you you, know, you massively yeah. missed out and look what i've done yeah <laughs> yeah so i always say that universe has a funny way of showing you a sign mm. yeah. so yeah yeah you never know bigger and better things on the way i hope so yeah um so you've got an adorable little girl yes six six I i've seen pictures she's Going so cute on 16 yeah oh really really really, really the sassy, best but really sweet oh so, yeah. and you've got a new fella good yeah. looker isn't he stunning how tall is he by the way six four. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> very straight, nice straight out of a boss advert <laughs> but i think i think it because how tall are you i'm five two. Oh, this is the cutest okay uh, i'm like this Hi. Okay, I did wonder because <laughs> I remember I was talking to this guy and he said to me that he was six seven and I went, Oh no, that's too way too tall for me. Way too tall. But then if I'm five five, then I'm like, Oh maybe like Yeah, maybe he could. Oh, but then no, I'm looking like at it. Do you come up to his pecs? Like Yeah, a little bit. But I like it. I like to I like being Feeling, feeling particular. Feeble. Is is that a do you not have <laughs> like feeble a word? It is, isn't it? No, it's, I don't think you, you mean that. You just mean like fragile, petite, like look petite, like yeah, 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 protected. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, he could just stand in front of you and block anything that ha yeah. comes your way. You do yeah. see a lot of really tall guys go with like very short girls. Like yeah, you know, yeah, it's not unusual. Do you yeah, have to? Because like surely, because I, I, I've been with a six four before, but I'm a couple of inches taller than you. I was like, Jesus Christ, my neck hurts too much. Like kissing him. <laughs> do you sometimes <laughs> just get a little chair and just like a little step so you can just kiss at the same level? Usually he should be sat down and I'll stand up or he'll just pick me up and put me on the kitchen yeah. counter so I can read. Oh. <laughs> That's That's it, really. Getting <laughs> steps out is less romantic. Yeah. I'll say, like, Wait a minute, be right back. Because yeah. <laughs> I was thinking this when I was talking to this guy that was like six, seven and I was just like, Nah, I'm gonna have to bring my portable step yeah. with me the whole time because I'm like, my neck is a DJ as well. I'm like, oh no, like yeah, you're gonna you put get it out. Used to it, you get used to it. <laughs> Although he, if I like do put my arms up like this, he's like, no, I put them down here because I'm like dragging his neck down to my level. Uh, <laughs> but for us females, it is a better angle them looking mm -hmm. down for rather sure, than yeah. Yeah. and you're like this. Around, nobody wants to see like, this. <laughs> They yeah. always say that, like when you're on top, you're like, oh my god, I'm fortunately unfortunate for the person that <laughs> to see me in this. Like nobody needs to see this. This is why you always flick your head back. <laughs> yeah, I get that. I get that. Oh goodness <laughs> me. Um, so how do you? Oh, you've just got a new uh, Instagram page of all your cute little photos. Yeah. And love yeah, we have. Oh, I was gonna say, do you try and keep your um, your personal bits out of the private eye and stuff. No, I don't mean like 
personal bits. I mean, yeah. like, you know, like, <laughs> I mean, like going on dates and stuff like that. Or if you yeah. want to keep some things. Yeah, kinda... we, we have like a good little mix. So uh, like sometimes if we're going somewhere really nice for a day, we might just get like the odd picture. Um, or when we're away, we get loads of pictures. And I think that was why we made the page. Um, just because a lot of people was interested. And I think coming from a show about love mm. and it's been all those years and people have kind of watched me like grow and see me go through, you know, a bad relationship. And then to where I am, it's almost like everybody feels so happy that they're like, oh, this yeah. is the one, like you've met the one. And they're really invested in it. So everybody was like, wanted to see more of him. And Cause it's grown chilled. quite a bit. Cause when did yeah. you start that? Um, not long ago. It wasn't long ago. Was no, cause uh, yeah. Ago. Yeah. Cause I think it popped up on my explore page. I was like, God, what a good looking couple. <laughs> 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 and then I was like, I'm so jealous of this relationship. Yeah. Like it's, you know, yeah, he's, he's honestly amazing. Cute. And he was just he really seems chilled. It. So yeah. I was just like, oh, let's see. we had all these gorgeous photos and I didn't want to obviously bombard like my personal yeah. Instagram page with just me and him all over everyone was like Jesus Christ have a day so yeah. I thought I'll make another one so that people that are really interested it's really in that smart. love that yeah. that they can see that as well as just you know me and my life in Vienna and yeah. what do you do in my career how did you guys stuff. meet? Um, so it's a really weird yeah I'm story. dying to know yeah. Yeah. it's a really weird story it's going to be like a fake story um, so we actually met five years ago um, on his his brother-in-law, his brother-in-law is now Stag Do at Ocean Beach in Ibiza. I just split up with Vienna's dad because he was a serial cheat. Um, and we, I just remember seeing him thinking, God, he's fit. <laughs> Started speaking to him, but he was really like, oh, I'm married. And I was like, oh, okay. Oh, so it one turned of those into, moments. Yeah, it was like... one of those moments. Um, but my friend was speaking to a group of his friends and we just, we just like spoke. So I thought, oh, okay, he's married, you know, what nice, genuine guy, whatever. Started speaking to him about trying to get like lad advice out of him, kind of saying, you know, well, how do boys' brains work? And this is what's happened to me. And I'm <laughs> so fed it. up. It's and good. One of them ones. Yeah. Um, couldn't remember his name, didn't know anything after, after that one day. And that was about five years ago. And still till like a couple of years ago, I remember speaking to my sister-in-law now who's married to my brother. I always used to say, there was this one guy and I used to say it to my mum, to all my friends, I said, there's this one guy I met years ago in Ocean Beach, and I said he was the husband vibe. Like, mm. obviously he wasn't my husband, but I was like, that's what I wanted in a man, because I just watched him throughout the day. This is giving me goosebumps. He was so respectful. Like, like all yeah. the girls was coming up to him in, in yeah. Ocean Beach, because he was a good looking guy, and he was like, I just kept seeing him like, oh no, I'm married, and I just thought, that's what I want a guy to be like, yeah. especially because I'd just been cheated on and gone through, you know, the worst relationship, and I, in my head that always stuck that day, mm. and who, like how he was. Um, so yeah, it was, it was all them years ago. And then it was an event, um, late last year I'd bumped into him. He came into this event in, in London and I'd just split up you know, a month or so ago from my other partner. And it was like a fit meeting <gasps> things. I'd not seen him for five years, but you know, when you instantly recognize someone and he was like, do you recognize me? And I was like, I do, but I can't think where from. And he was like, oh, Ocean Beach, like five years ago. And in my head, it was just like, <gasps> it's my husband. Like, <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I nearly died, I thought. Oh my God, that's you manifested that yeah. shit. Yeah, but my friends was like, you literally spoke about this guy all the time. And I was like, couldn't remember his name, didn't know where he's from. He was just the guy from Murphy Beach. Oh my God. And then five years later, I bumped into him and it was just like, both come out of relationships and it just went <gasps> zero to a thousand. Oh, wow, See, when it's meant to be, yeah. it's meant to be. You had oh, to go through that. shit to get. Yeah, I literally oh. sold my house and stuff within a month and we moved in together, which is. Yeah. <laughs> what? Yeah. <laughs> crazy but it's almost wow. like we kind of knew each other from yeah. like the in-depth conversation years ago and he said oh, i just remember thinking what a lovely girl and i can't believe she's been fucked over and i said the same thing and oh my god can we swear yeah 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 <laughs> um, good you know she's been messed over or whatever and then yeah it just happened so oh but best thing that ever happened to me because he's just a great guy but there was a point that you said about um Oh, you know, you, you talk to him about boy advice and stuff like yeah. this. Sometimes I do that with some guys. like, yeah. And I'm just like, oh, yeah, we're not going to have him. But then somehow, like, a year later, you're still talking to them. You're like, oh, it's starting to get flirty now. But you know everything about yeah. me. I've just told everything about you. I literally were <laughs> like, vomited. Because it was like, oh. that was actually when, when I first bumped into him was, like, my escape holiday. It was like, yeah. I just found out, you know, I've been cheated on. All this had been happening behind my back when I was pregnant with Vienna and I just oh was God. devastated so I kind of just like ran away like yeah. went to Ibiza and then here I was and he, you know deaded it straight away he's like oh I'm married so I just thought oh 
okay, oh, I need to know what makes men tick and why they like this. And it was just a really nice conversation like it was nothing yeah. even like that and i just thought he's probably not even looking at me like that so that's why it's, i thought i'm gonna drag stuff out of him and he was like oh no i do i do remember i always remember jeff oh you're such a lovely girl and so when oh. i bumped into him again it was just the most bizarre thing really bizarre but good this is so like oh, yeah. that's just so it's like a, yeah it needs to be like, it could like be a, a book story. like the whole oh lead up to i do it. believe it i do believe yeah. in that because i think Love and finding a relationship in this day and age is so freaking hard. Yeah, like hard. I'm not even on dating sites anymore. I just can't be asked for that shit. Like yeah. I really, really can't. And, and I, I didn't think... used to really believe it. You know when people used to say like the really cringy line and be like, "Oh, when you know, you know." And I used to think, "Shut up!" Like yeah. I haven't thought I knew the past four times. Didn't yeah, happen. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah, I think You're I, like, yeah. Oh, okay, well, how do you not know? So I, you know, but this time I'm like, I get it. I get it now. Yeah, I know what they meant. Oh. But when you know, you know. And you just, just like, all, it's like the little things, you know, that you, you know, it's the difference, like, they just show up more, they support you more, like, yeah. you, like, he knew my cycle the other day, which was <laughs> the most bizarre thing ever. <laughs> he was like, so you're on day 20 of your cycle, and I was like, what? And he's like, I'm be like, to work you out. you like, like, yeah, in two days, I'll be very, very angry, but in seven days, I'll be very, very horny, so yeah. enjoy that week. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we was listening to a podcast and he'd literally because he'd heard stuff about like women's cycles and I think he'd like picked it up and then he'd counted from when my last period was and he's like you're on day 20 of your cycles so you feel a little bit like this and I was like yeah yeah I'm feeling a bit like that actually God, my oh, yeah. what does he do by the way um he owns some um kids like hair salons he says he works in the hair industry and he really like plays himself down but he's he's very entrepreneurial yeah and he's opened a string of hair salons called Shortcuts Kids. Oh. Um, so do you know like the little cars and stuff like yeah. all for kids salons? It yeah. just makes oh, him even cuter. Yeah. That yeah. you just wouldn't think <laughs> Isn't it? he looks like he looks and Damn. then he owns salons specialising in kids' mm. hair. It's just wow. cute. Yeah. Oh, he's got, yeah, definitely. Yeah. More of those, please. <laughs> More men need to be produced More men like, like DJ, him. Yeah. Please. Yeah, does he oh. have any other six foot four friends? <laughs> <laughs> Probably. <laughs> I'll have a look for you, let you know. <laughs> Thanks very much. <laughs> <laughs> so this part of the show, we're going to talk about bangers and trash. Things that are happening at the moment in the media, in the news. Let's have a little discussion. So first up, Threads. New social media platform brought mm, out yeah. by Instagram. Are we liking it or are we hating it? Love it. I like that it's rivaling Twitter because I think for too long Twitter's just mm. had its own way. And there's been mm -hmm. so many changes recently after Elon Musk took over that... He took my blue yes, tick. I'm, yeah, I'm angry about about that. That. Yeah. Then. <laughs> angry about that. I haven't got over that. But it, it's more that the changes that was just all money orientated. Yeah. And when yeah. you've been using a site for so long that's for free and mm. especially as a journalist that like you're, you know, it's, you're using it to gather sources, you're, you know, there's contacts on there, you're sharing stories. Um, it's been it's been such a difficult change. Mm. Um, you know, it was so important to see who was verified and if you could trust that. Of course, person. it was. Um, yeah, but and no, you that will be paid for your blue away. tick. I, did, I was like, I'm not paying for it back. What's the I point of paying it? for it? it? I, just like... I just don't understand the argument because if you pay for it, then you could be anybody, and that's yeah. just not the that's not what it's about. Um, so I'm glad that there's this alternative, but I just feel as if like I need to sort of think of something different to be putting on there because you've so got I have every single. Yeah. That's been my different. angle. I've kind of. I'm using my threads is now going to be my unfiltered page, as in I don't post the best of things I want to post. So ah. like on my Instagram will be like, you know, my brand work and pictures that are really nice with the, you know, the good yeah. lighting, yeah. yeah. coloured and like, so it looks aesthetically nice. Like my threads is going to be more like a, a bit of like a, a be real. Yeah, but like be real like, was, be real was more for the, I might steal yeah. this idea. You know I mean? yeah. That was more for the kids be real, wasn't yeah. it? So I feel like my threads is gonna be more like the unfiltered version is like yeah. sweet. A bit more German. like a, a vloggy thing, like, oh, yeah. nice coffee, yeah. oh, nice graffiti. Literally and like, that. who cares? Like you can post and post and post. That's just, what I yeah. did love about Twitter. You could just and tweet, it just tweet, tweet. so negative. Like mm. yeah. Twitter was just a place of everybody bashing everybody. Mm. And I just, I'd not gone on it really for a while for that reason. But yeah. now I'm all here for the positive change in threads, I think. Yeah. It'd be it interesting is, it is how it actually it. develops because they've yeah. already been talking about um, Mark Zuckerberg, isn't it, who's who's launched this from um, mm -hmm. Instagram and they've already been talking about different updates. So they're gonna, you know, there's gonna be, I think there will be the verification side of it as well. Mm -hmm. 
um, and changes to that. There's they've, yeah. they've got private messaging that's coming in. They've got oh. know, there's just so many different bits and bobs that are going to because update I don't know it. whether or not they tested it out on Instagram first because obviously you've got what was that you know when you when you go on your DMs or you see people's statuses. Oh yeah, I'm like yeah. Oh, I'm not doing that. Like I've not no way. That. I mean, what do you mean? Like people have like. They, they type what they're doing and stuff like this. Did it's Facebook like, do that at one point? Where you just sort of say, out to lunch or... Yeah. <laughs> really? it, it's really... Oh, yeah, if you go on, like, into, WhatsApp, as he status? No, no, no. If you go into your, um, like, direct messages, like, you'll see the icons at the top of, like, people, and they will write, like, off to the rail ascot or, like, F1 this weekend. Like, yeah. Really? Yeah. I feel like I've not noticed that. <laughs> <laughs> But um, I thought it was quite funny. Loads of people kicking off because if you start up a thread, it's like, okay, to deactivate and delete this, you've got to delete your Instagram. Yeah, I heard that. I don't care though. I'm like, yeah, I was fine. Like, you can have it. Do it. We've yeah. got to move with the times. Everybody yeah. did the same with TikTok and we all jumped on TikTok. And, yeah. you know, Instagram's going to be there. Threads obviously are coming through as the new thre- new things. I think just, just move with it. Mm. It's just like, you know, I said, I don't really use my Twitter, but I'm not going to delete it. It just sits there anyway. So oh, that's so what even I mean. If I just had to Inactive. leave it in a little folder. Just, yeah, if bye. I didn't want it, I would. <laughs> bye. <laughs> uh, talking about uh, Elon Musk and Mark Zuckerberg, apparently there's going to be like this fight. <laughs> <laughs> Is it for real? Oh, am I, am I gullible? I'm really gullible as well, so I'm going to look at I, you for this one. I don't think it's real, but I would be so up for that. It would just be brilliant. Oh, but but I'm really upset. I'm really upset because I was like, this shit has got good. Like, <laughs> like you know what? Like, I wouldn't get it. Like, I wouldn't get it. Why would they? What do they need to have a fight for? Chat for charity, charitable reason, reasons. Yeah. That's all they need. Okay, but it is. Fair, it's like fair play. the two big swinging dicks, like <laughs> getting into a cage together. Like, yeah. it's good. They yeah. If it's for charity, so then cool. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're just. It's mad how much money they've got between them. Yeah. And if they just want to have a punch at each other. But in Mark the ring, Zuckerberg. Then why not? Yeah. Mark Zuckerberg's yeah. like. I won this fight by bringing out threads. Bye, Twitter. Like, <laughs> see yous. Oh, God. It's it will probably going to be a fight soon, isn't it? I wonder it, after what's going to happen about Twitter, though. And at the moment, I don't know, what are you doing? Are you still kind Elon of... Elon will come back and be like, we'll give you like your blue ticks. Yeah, I think yeah. they're going <laughs> to do things to bring us back. And I think we'll be... I'm like, all right, then, I'm coming back because yeah, no one will blue tick like that. We're going to tug of war between yeah. them. <laughs> and we're so gullible with follow the crowd. I feel like I've been a bit... I've left Twitter in the dust for a while because yeah. of like how negative it is. But yeah, I just hope that the negativity true. doesn't follow into threads yeah. and that you end mm. up just getting all of that hate on there as well. Yeah. Be because nice. I think with the Twitter, what I liked is like they had like that trending hashtags like especially if you were tweeting about the love island like mm. and then and then what could happen is you know you could write something really sassy people are like oh yeah I really like that and it will go viral but like i don't know if i'm yeah, starting do we to feel on threads yeah are we not? feeling or it do we get the same thing? vibe yeah, like I know. is it trending and then how do people find you and see i don't and know who i'm following that, yeah. i can't see who i'm following but, but that's what's me. really good about it at the moment because we have absolutely no idea what's going on but all of us have no idea so it's like quite yeah. trying to see what's going to happen it's next. like one no big idea. group chat yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> no one knows what to do and everyone's just like yellow i'm like i'm like am i just sharing like a photo from like this okay right anyways so is it going to stay? Is it going to go? Do you think it will die out? Or is that it? It's going to stay? Um, I hope it stays. Yeah, For I a positive angle. I think I think there's a good chance because people were just looking for that alternative to Twitter. Just yeah. something a bit kinder. Mm-hmm. But mm. that you're not. it's not reliant totally on photos. Yeah. I think we are mm. a little bit fed up of how much... I mean, you, you were saying earlier about the yeah. content all the time that you've got yeah. to produce. And to make sure that you're... Whether it's you're looking your best or not, you're still taking pictures of yourself. And it's quite yeah. nice just to have an opinion. Put an opinion out there and say, mm. you know, mm. what you're yeah. watching something. You know, do you have any yeah. recommendations? Yeah, or, that's so yeah, true. That's what the, those yeah. kind of things are really good about Twitter, that you can kind of yeah. share that community. I know. I, I used to be so picture. good that on Twitter. Twitter as well. I used to always be like, I used to always tweet loads of stuff about football and all of this, yeah. and then it kind of just stopped. That's like how we used to be like, you, my page on Twitter was always just talking about Watford all the time. Yeah. <laughs> and it was just like, and then it just stopped, maybe because Watford started doing really badly, and I was just like, wow, another depressing weekend. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, Amanda. Yes. More drama <laughs> in the TV world at the moment. Yeah. So Drama is non-stop at the Yeah, moment. isn't yeah. it? Right, so there's been some allegations of a BBC presenter has been taken off air, has been taken off air, um, after s- after asking for sexual explicit photos and giving the teen £35,000. Yeah. First of all, this the whoever the presenter is, 
Has it got money? Yeah. Tell me, what do you know? Yeah, Surely you know so the Yeah, so this is a story that's come from the sun. Um, it's a massive explosive story that has sort of rocked the country because we're all on tenterhooks until we find out who it is. Mm. Um, we just know them as a, a top BBC star mm. um, who paid for um, these sexual images of someone who was 17 at the time until they were they're now 20. Um, we can't talk about who the person is at the moment for legal reasons. Um, but it's it's just been one of those things where we're just I don't know it's like another another shock another letdown Isn't another it? disappointment it's constant um, I mean straight yeah. after Philip Schofield as well you know exactly do you yeah. think we're gonna see more and more of this like it's almost like a Me Too mm. I don't know I think I think there's a potential and I think there's that it's obviously showing that people are more likely to come forward now um, but part of this story and the reason why it's captivated so many people is the fact that um, allegedly the uh, the victim, alleged victim's mum, had gone to be the BBC about this presenter um, back in May. So there's been a long time where actually it appears nothing has been done, mm. um, and that's what people are concerned about Whoa. because we need to be able to know that when someone at the BBC, which you know is the state broadcast, um, it's we need to know that the investigations are being dealt with mm. properly and that we can have trust in them. And I think that's the thing. And when you're inviting mm -hmm. someone into your home, um, I'm talking about the channel, not not a person in particular, but when you're inviting them into your home, every day we you know, pay the the, ta the um, license fee and everything. BBC license fee, why? If you tick yeah. the box, that is. So, <laughs> so we pay for all, we do pay for that. We do. And, and you know, you're, you're inviting them in and you, I don't, you just expect that kind of trust. And it was the same, yeah. it's, I know it's different because of advertising things, but, it was the same with Philip Schofield. It was someone mm -hmm. who every single morning you knew was there at 10 a.m. Yeah. And that mm. during the pandemic, it felt during like a global times, granddad, yeah. if that makes yeah. sense. It yeah. felt like everybody's granddad. So it was and quite yeah. disappointing. And you invite someone in and you just want to be able to believe that they're telling the truth, believe they're genuine, then that you're getting yeah. them for who they are on screen. And we all know everyone's got private lives, but it's just about knowing that everything's above board. And that's what investigations are ongoing now. Yeah. The, the star in question, he's been suspended. Um, from the BBC and there's an investigation um, and we're waiting to see what happens about that. But I we don't know how long it's going to no. take, that's the issue. Okay, maybe, I know this sounds really, really bad. You know, obviously, uh, you know, a, a teenager explicit photo has been sent to this BBC presenter. Um, same with like the Philip Schofield and, you know, the, the young lad. But can police get involved like how how would the police get involved because he's technically 17 like i think we need to wait until we know all of the ins and outs mm. and that's what the investigation is going mm. to bring obviously we've heard from the alleged um victim's mum who i'd has... love to know what how the mum found out she, mm. she just like walked yeah. in on her son or I something know. and and also how she felt like she had to come to the, the newspaper she wasn't paid to do the interview or anything like that it was Damn. more out of desperation because she was still seeing this person on screen mm. when she'd submitted a complaint allegedly so oh that's God, what that's is awful. that is what um has made people really really <coughs> angry and yeah. um it feels like another cover-up i mean we're not that yeah. long on from the whole jimmy savile saga um that was covered up by the bbc um so there, there is there are so many parts of this story that it feels as if there's a lot more to come out oh my god um we just need to be patient, which is hard in this day and yeah. age because you kind of want like the information. Yeah. People want answers. You want yeah. you want answers. I tell you, this won't be the end of it though. There'll be more. I'm pretty sure there'll be more yeah, people coming more. out, actors, presenters, you name it. Like mm. you're right though about it being a bit of a movement. Yeah. Um. And Harvey and Weinstein seeing... like kicked it all off. For it the just makes me sad that we've stuff. had mm. several movements, and it just it just keeps feeling as if well. Mm. it's okay it's okay that it comes out in the end but if someone has actually reported something why is why are the investigations taking so long yeah. why it's like being is something ignored. not being ignored, yeah. really. and that's why did so did the mum then go to the journalist then when the police uh, when the police when bbc didn't do anything yes yeah so the the, the mum went to the journalist yes yeah, so she, she want to make some money out of it or something like no, why would you go to paid, the journalist she wasn't paid at all right um for this was she out of desperation thought, yeah. that the, the bbc hadn't but done anything this person was still on air okay i get that but the thing that irks me a bit is that why would you go to the journalist to say about your son? Like, it's something that... We don't know if it's yeah. a, um, a male or female um, involved yet. Mm. Um, but 
because because there was complete desperation obviously that mm. this person was on screen and nothing had been done about it um, yeah it's almost like if you try all angles you kind of just yeah, shout from a rooftop in the end and, 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 and as soon as the, the story's been out in the in the newspaper this person is off air has been suspended we're all gonna find out there's an investigation launch and that's all because the sun carried yeah the story. i suppose yeah yeah no i see your point now because whereas before i would i was just thinking like why would you want to go to the journalist and then yeah like have your whole life like exposed and phone up because it was obviously the her only option know. yeah like because they will find out who this because at the moment the teen isn't named you know and it, 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 he won't be named but there will always be a leak like there was a leak with philip schofield in mm -hmm. that young lad you know it's a shame that you know, so. that, that has to be the case where there's always a leak. There's always a leak. Yeah, mm. so, I mean, that's a risk for for the mum to put but the But we shouldn't through. be even talking about the sort of victim side of it. This is mm. about the BBC. This is about how they handled mm. a complaint. And whether the ins and outs of who said what, it's about if someone's gone to someone at the BBC and said, made it accusations, we need to, we need to be assured that that's being taken seriously. Yeah. Mm. Um, and... And not just brush under the carpet um, and hoping it goes away. I'd be interested to know what what was said, like when was said, like what the yeah. when she, you know the mum or the parent called up. Like I would be interested to know how that was actually dealt with. Did yeah. it get investigated? What evidence did she provide? Mm -hmm. Like because if she provided a substantial amount of evidence to that, and then was still ignored, that would mm -hmm. be interesting to know. Yeah, of course. and that's what are the next steps now because of this story coming out. So the BBC are under pressure to be able to. To explain to the show chain the of paper events trail as well, yeah, as and well. To be able to say, well, when did they know about this? Yeah, um, and yeah, I just, I just kind of feel for the obviously who's going to get fired involved. at the BBC. That's yeah. what I want to know because yeah. <laughs> HR, all of that lot that who obviously knew about it, thick loads of firings. Yeah, see them going. Be, oh God, I'm just. Yeah, it's just a horrible, it's another horrible story that it just it? really dents your trust in, in people, in yeah. corporations. I feel sorry for the other presenters as well that being roped into it, like Rylan Clark was just like, whoa, 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 guys, mm. like, I'm nothing to do with this. Stop using my image just because I turn around and I said it's nothing to do with me. Yeah. It's almost like, I don't know. Because he had to say that it was nothing to do with him because people were accusing him on Twitter. And I felt like there was quite a lot of homophobia on, on I Twitter. I thought so too. I was like, what, are we just going to categorise him now? Like, mm, why yeah. is it any different? Like, why does it have to be a gay person? Yeah. It's really sad. Do better. Yeah, but for yeah. sure. But yeah, we'll, we wait and see to whether the BBC will come out and, and name the person or yeah. the person comes out themselves. I bet, I bet deep down, Philip Schofield's probably thinking, oh, pressure's off of me now. <laughs> I know, but it, imagine it coming within a few weeks. It is, it is crazy, isn't it? I mean, <laughs> it's there's always, it's just always, always oh. something. Like yeah, the thing, there's always yeah. something, and I'm just, I don't, I don't actually really. So until you guys actually said about this to me this morning, I don't know. I don't. I tend not to look at things too much. I don't even. I don't watch the news. I think I only watch mm. my smart TV, which is like my Netflix, and I get lost in my like, you know, little shows and things like that. But for that reason, mm. because I feel like it's so depressing. Mm. Like even the whole that's whole flipping submarine thing that took over my oh goddamn God life. No. I was so stressed about it, where <laughs> these people were, yeah. are they breathing, how much air have they got? And then I was, it was, I was even like, oh, 11 p.m. tonight, oh, I must find out what happens, 11 yeah. p.m. And it was like, Deb Ray found, and I was like, yeah. oh, they're dead. Uh, yeah, yeah definitely. but I remember like, like, I was on holiday at the time, my family, and I was just thinking, and then you get these notifications coming up and these news things like, dun 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 they've run out of air and i just thought great well now i've got but visions of them all choking and do you know it's like it's I, everything yeah. it's every and i think god i wish we had like updates you know in the news sometimes about things that was like a real positive yeah. movement that was going on and they like this is happening this is happening look what the world's done yeah. like just so you could just walk about and feel good for a day without like mm. the being <laughs> You know, <laughs> missing so bad. I don't know. I don't know whether or not this was a meme or not. But um, when they we're talking about the submarine, I shouldn't laugh. But like Sky News, it must have been a meme. A meme, surely. But Sky News literally had like in the background like the countdown to how many minutes and hours left of oxygen they had. But yeah. it was like exact same colour as Deadline Day for sports. <laughs> so it was what? <laughs> you know, deadline day for football, like football transfers, right? Oh, it's like right. yellow and black, right? Yeah. And they've got countdown for the deadline day. But like they it had the same, the, the same setup. 
Oh it's got to be. But this, and this, is, really, this is where social media is I don't really think it was so bad. because I think it was somebody like taking a picture and was like, oh, surely Sky Sports should have just changed the background of that. Like, God yeah. damn, that the same as deadline day. Yeah, but, and it, but it was even that, like, yeah. you know, once the, you know, the news are kind of, this is why it's so important, this point that you're saying and the things that are investigated, because the news is so like important for everything and what they you know choose to speak on and how much they capitalize something mm. everything follows suit mm. so, so social media then blurs everybody then talk about on the social media and then this this whole sub thing that happened and then all the tiktok there was all these you know memes all through my tiktok it oh, was all yeah. like, you know memes of the girls the running Titanic. into the ocean yeah. trying to find the billionaires <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah just like comedy i mean that's yeah, that's something there. where i'm just like that's not yeah no yeah. but this but then you can't your tiktok's like off for days because all you do is sit through your tiktok and then what's going on it's all yeah. related yeah, to yeah, that yeah, and you yeah, just yeah, think yeah. Oh, i can't be bothered mm. yeah. i wish we had i think, more I think it goes back to the point of being we're just so obsessive and impatient now and it's mm-hmm. the news when something happens you want to have mm-hmm. the answers as soon as possible mm-hmm. and an investigation is delaying that and people just get frustrated With the competition who can get the fastest and there there are yeah. so many um sort of obstacles now for for big businesses and you know they've got to go through all their procedures you know what it's mm-hmm. like and when they don't deliver something really quickly it leaves everyone sort of just making their own assumptions and then there'll be another new cycle that will come yeah and everyone will move on I know. You know, it's like, they, sta- it's like they start a book and then get you to the middle page and then go we'll pick up that one later right we're going to start a new book mm. that's yeah. what happens and because everything's left in a position because everything's so all done like, with like think about yeah. you know um inquiries everything is yeah, a yeah, year yeah, later yeah. i feel like they should just come to us when they've got a full story <laughs> yeah. an a to a z and they start and they say this is what's two, happened two years ago this, this is, is the what outcome. happened this yeah. person's left because of x y and z yeah. right but there we go just Dando. so i can know it's been solved yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> Okay, so this part of the show is called Dilemma. (laughs) So we (laughs) ask our fans um, if they've got any dilemmas for you guys to answer. And we do have one at the moment. So I'll just read it out to you. Oh, uh, I'm hooking up with my brother's best friend. My brother has a really close friend that he has known for years. And as a result, he has become very close to our family and joining us on holiday, etc., etc. Now, he's totally off limits. However... (laughs) We have just come back from Portugal and on the trip near the end of the holiday, we actually hooked up. Fast forward, we are still hooking up now. And I've realized that I've had feelings for him and I pretty much have done since I've known him. I don't know what to do. I have no idea how he feels either, which kind of adds to the mess even more. I do really like him and I never have felt this way before. Please help. Oh, I love this one. I would say just absolutely go for it, girl. First of all, you always want what you can't have. Mm. So whoever told him that he's off off limits limits. is just like your own fault. Yeah. 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 Um, I think, yeah, be honest. I think first thing would be to probably, if I was her, I'd probably have the conversation with the guy. Mm. Because if he's like seeing this as a bit fun or exciting, again, an off limits Mm. kind of thing and doesn't really feel anything for her, like it would be difficult how to deal with that if you address it to the family. But yeah. if he's like, Do you know what, I feel the same about her. I've fallen for her. She's fallen for him. And they're like, we actually see this going somewhere. Then I think, yeah, you should be like, okay, we're gonna have to break this to the family. But say, look, this is what's been going on. I don't this think is how it would we be feel. So much to like the mum and dad. It probably be to the brother. So what I would do is write a little note, post it underneath the bedroom door, and be like, yeah, I've read it that by. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And go out for an hour or the so. The most passive aggressive <laughs> message. Just yeah. to let you know I'm going to send that and run out of the house. <laughs> yeah. No, that, that's, but it's family yeah. anyways at the end of the day. It's blood. They just like, want you to what's going to happen? But, you know, maybe yeah. this brother said, you know, if it is off limits for the reason that it could be an absolute player. Yeah, could be. So it could be furious, be like, why get yourself involved? But she's so, already yeah. done it now. So that's, that's a difficulty. It's about, like yeah. you said, it's about the, yeah. like, does she admit to it? Yeah, knowing she has to have that conversation and know whether know where, where she's she gonna go with yeah. it. Because yeah, yeah, have the conversation with him if he's like, oh, I'm not really feeling. It. Just, she's obviously gonna get hurt in it, but you know mm. she's not the one hiding it and living the lie. I would definitely. I have a real guilt. But conscience. do you think that we should be having these sorts of conversations? Because they always say, don't they? They say you don't need to have the conversation with somebody to be like, where's this going? Where can we see it? Because as soon as you start putting pressure onto it, like mm. you really like the guy then it, you know, you're know you putting pressure for this person to, to make a decision. You either know in yourself or, I don't know. 
Like yeah. it's this is where the dating said, world. I don't, so I don't know how he tricky. feels. It's a little bit like that's a bit worrying. But that's yeah, what I mean. If you don't bit. know how he feels, then if he's not like telling you how like crazy he is about you or this mm. best thing that's ever happened to him or whatever, like yeah. maybe you're getting a bit of a bad vibe too for this to be a dilemma now. Like you know if somebody likes you. Yeah. Like yeah, hundred percent. We've all been there though, if where we've convinced ourselves that it's it's <laughs> like yeah. we're oh no, but they're just having a bad day and really we're no. like, no, the truth is like <laughs> but shit. The, but the difference is but the difference is, okay, so he is friends with the brother, mm, right? Yeah. He's around the family's house quite a lot. Okay. So she's gonna see him. Like you will not like you, it's not like oh this person hasn't seen me for like two weeks. You will be seeing this person because he's always around. So you kinda know when you look at somebody whether mm. or not they're interested. They might and, not and be he, texting. And they know they sh- they know each other. Mm. Like they have that kind of friendship yeah, they already should, the foundation. Yeah, I suppose they should have it, be able to have that yeah. conversation of yeah. yeah, like I would just if it was me, I'd be like, have the private conversation together, just say like, look, this is a sticky situation now. It's gone a bit far, we're still hooking up. What we where's this what we're gonna do? Mm. Because it's only gonna be a matter of time, mm. I think, before mm. somebody finds out and then, you know, the brother could be like you know, to his sister, for instance, how did you not tell me? And the same with a friend. And then it could just cause way more drama than it needs to be. But if they're yeah. both on the same page, she really likes him, he really likes her, it could be like a happy relationship. And the brother's just going to have to be like, do you know what? It's what it is. Yeah. yeah. It could be like um, Monica and Chandler in Friends. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Where this Ross is what I was... It was really, really yeah. mad. Mm. And then he was, he was fine with it and he loved it. This could be exactly But the I was just thinking the same thing. Sometimes it's probably better to get ahead of it before you get caught. So it could be like an occasion where somebody catches you in the house oh and you're having a little kiss. Yeah, or like the awkwardness when you know something definitely has just happened. Yeah, yeah exactly. exactly. And you have the scene from Friends. Yeah. <laughs> like, you're kissing my sister. <laughs> you know? Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, I think they need to be honest. Yeah. It's um, like, like, we everybody will say like these built up like lies or the more that you like cover things up it will just it will come out and it will mm. be bigger explosion the more that you cover up so can we find out what happens I'm yeah yeah <laughs> let us know get please just contact. have the combo and tell us <laughs> yeah i think honesty have the conversation mm. yeah boom if anybody else has any more dilemmas to be answered on the show then get in touch and we will read them out Thank you very much, ladies, for joining me on this month's show of Getting Lippy. Join me next time for more showbiz, goss, and entertainment news. Bye.